Yeah, well, uh, Osman, thank you for speaking to us. Let's take a look at our text line. Um, we have uh, Muraydi, Nicholas Muraydi in Nyeri Town who says, thanks Akisa and your panelists for this very important conversation. The changes in placement in university education is very key. My question is uh, to Dr. Ahome and her team, are, is Dr. Ahome and her team working in tandem with the policy makers to place learners in courses on need basis? Courses like agriculture, animal husbandry, and various TVET courses, which are key to the development of this country. That's Nicholas Murethe in Nyeri Town asking that. And I think uh, most of you will be responding to this. Dr. Njokas asks, are these changes in COOPS cluster subjects required grades going to be applicable from next university and colleges placement? The answer is yes. You, we'd already responded to that earlier, Dr. Njoka. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we'll be taking a final one as we go. But uh, Dr. Homi, a lot of questions shot towards you. So let's, uh, let's begin with that. Uh, yes. There's someone who asked whether they need to do home science for them to qualify for art and design. We can begin from there. Oh, that. okay. Uh, no, you don't need to do home science to qualify for art and design. Home science is now just an added advantage for you in, in terms of getting your, your subject, uh, cluster subjects together uh, when applying for a course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there was a question on... Uh, diploma students uh, who... And why they have to start all over again, yet the first and second year courses are... Yes, so. now we have uh, the Kenya National Qualifications Authority mm -hmm. that is looking at that and how uh, students can progress. If you have seen uh, lately, we are saying even a student with an E mm -hmm. can pursue their career to the highest level they want and, and even their, their education to the highest level they wish. So with KNQA, they are looking at what are the, how do we move, how do you get the credit accumulation and transfer system to get you to the next level. And we have been working, uh, we, we have been working with KNQA, looking at areas of um, courses around agriculture as a priority, because clearly we are feeling, when we look at the placement uh, trends, Agriculture has really been affected. All universities are crying that they don't have enough students for agriculture. Yet that is one of the areas that uh, we rely on as a country. Mm -hmm. So it means in some years to come, we'll really have to, to import labor when it comes to agriculture. So we are looking at how does a student who has a diploma can transition and carry some credits to the, to the university without having to start from first year. Mm -hmm. So that is work in progress and uh, in the agriculture sector, I think we're almost good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, where students with a certificate will pursue their diploma uh, again without having from, uh, starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. There was a question on uh, ASAL. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. Um, what I'd like to say is that we have uh, an affirmative action uh, policy and we have uh, a way that we look at how, which are these students who have done their primary education. They have been born in an ASAL region, mm -hmm. done their primary uh, studies in an ASAL region and secondary. And then they can now qualify to be considered for placement under the affirmative action. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have uh, Kenyans who go to schools in Nairobi. Yeah. But when it comes to application, they say they are from the ASAL region. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, those are not considered mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to affirmative action. Um, in terms of the placing of students based on the need basis, I think I mentioned yeah. that with agriculture being uh, a priority. Uh, question on the cluster points. Mm -hmm. And how we, we arrive uh, at that. How we arrive at. First, the beginning is uh, identifying which are the cluster subjects. For every course, we have cluster subjects. So um, for medicine, for example, we have mathematics, we have uh, chemistry, we have biology, um, and then we have uh, a language, either English or Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. Those form the cluster subjects. Okay. Now, we look at the performance, your performance in these four subjects. Uh, comparing with how other students in the year 
have performed in those subjects, then you get your cluster weight. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, something else as we uh, uh, about to bring it to a close in the next 10 or so. Obunga Pamo and Professor Ntarangwe, perhaps you could help us with this. What is being done to reduce duplication of courses? For instance, computer science, computer technology, and ICT are all degrees leading into the same career. So the question of duplicity mm -hmm. as a regulator, is this a matter of concern? Mm -hmm. uh, another very good question from uh, uh, our listener and uh, someone who is viewing us. Because uh, the process which has brought us here today of uh, getting the right kind of clusters, the right kind of choices of subjects is going to continue into the next phase. And the next phase is to ask ourselves of all the available uh, courses in, say, computer science, what are the learning outcomes? What is the content? And does the title reflect those things? And again, there's need to harmonize. Uh, and I think this took place because institutions want to kind of set themselves apart. But I want to uh, suggest that what sets apart an institution is its culture, how it goes about training and preparing students uh, so that you can have a degree uh, with a similar content from one university and you have different kinds of outcomes in terms of the students. And again, we want to make sure that we understand that students are able to move and progress into the next level, especially if they want to go into graduate school, postgraduate work, that they have the same content and the same kind of uh, learning outcomes that they have. So that is going to be the next phase of our, of our stakeholder engagement, uh, especially with the universities, so that we can get these uh, different nomenclatures uh, in courses harmonized so that students can choose a program knowing what they are choosing is also similar to the program that is in another institution. Thank you. Professor Mluvi, perhaps you'll take it from uh, Nashon Jadero. He also teaches in one of the um, local universities. Matching lifelong skills development needs with talents and labor market demographics is a central puzzle. Until solved, all proposals will be missing the mark. Just a game of moving in circles or moving in circles. How is our curve of demand and supply for skill sets over time? And I think we've, uh, we've attempted to address the question of uh, skills vis-a-vis -vis the development needs that people get. So maybe just expound on that. Thank you, Akisa. I think as, as in the university sector, we need to work closely with the industry to ensure that the skills we are building of applicability in the market so that when we work together we ensure that our graduates will get skills and the competencies which are required in the job market so that close collaboration will be key and if you allow me I can also comment on this issue of the diploma and the credit transfer yes very important yes because it's coming up now and then the Kenya National Qualifications Authority in my honest opinion should move with speed and they develop a harmonized credit transfer system which is applicable across the Kenyan universities. Right now, there are some universities which allow minimum credit transfer from diploma to degree programs. Again, traditionally, there is a minimum period of time you must have studied in a university to get a degree from that university in terms of time and in terms of the courses you have taken. So they allow a few of them. But there are also a different school of thought which believes that you can only transfer credit from the same level. So you cannot transfer credit from diploma to a degree, but if you are doing a degree in University A and you transfer to University B, then you can be able to transfer credits from the same level, from degree to degree, but diploma to diploma. So unless we come up with a comprehensive policy on credit accumulation transfer system applicable across the board, that issue is going to be problematic, and I think we need to engage the Kenya, the Kenya National Qualifications Authority mm -hmm. to bring that issue to a close. Uh, perhaps, the, yes, 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 just, yes, just uh, And forward. finally, I was to comment on the issue of agriculture. I think over the last few years, we have had challenges in students getting into agriculture, and this review had identified the bottlenecks. 
and it was basically the cluster requirements for the courses in agriculture. And we believe that with the, the, the reviewed criteria, when it is implemented, the student, we will have more students enrolling in agriculture related courses because agriculture is key in guaranteeing food security in this country. Thank you. Right, and I really wanted you to finish with responding to this question um, before we get the closing, uh, 30 second closing remarks, uh, uh, Professor Muluvi. One here is asking, he calls himself uh, Lord Isa on Twitter, if a student called off a semester in 2018, when they rejoin back to the university, the fee structure will be affected by the current year, or will they follow the same plan as before? Then he goes ahead to ask, why do microbiology students, why are microbiology students doing quantum physics units? Perhaps you could <laughs> let us know that. I, I don't know they are, which university they are doing that course, but mm. basically most of the degree courses where we are doing Bachelor of Science, there is a, the way they are structured in the first year, you do basic courses. So you find yourself doing mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, just in the first year. Then when, and then it, the, the, that arrangement continues to change as you progress towards the fourth year. When you move to that year, you find you are doing professional courses concentrated in microbiology, but you may have done a few of the other courses in the first and the second year to get a Bachelor of Science, but then specialization will be in that and the fourth year. All right, let's get closing remarks. Uh, Professor Ntarangwe, in 30 seconds, so where do we go from here? A lot of concerns are from various stakeholders. What do we expect to see? We continue having conversations and we continue knowing that all these subject areas are related. For instance, philosophy, mathematics and music are related because they are, have logical uh, progressions from the most basic to the most complex. So let's not build these walls saying that this uh, this is only for this kind of a student. We should allow students to explore different courses because in the world we're living in, we will need people with multiple skills to handle the complexity of our world. Thank you. All right, as you give us uh, closing remarks, I really need to ask you this from uh, Bonnie Miner. What, do, what should do about courses that have very minimal practicability in the 21st century, such as anthropology? As you give us your closing remarks, Dr. Hom. Wow. Um, <laughs> I think uh, looking at anthropology mm. from that perspective, I think it's uh, really not uh, right. Because personally, I did sociology, mm. which was one of the courses that was uh, considered in the same line as anthropology. And I'm glad uh, Professor Ntarangui, mm. who is here with us, is also an anthropologist. Mm -hmm. And I don't think... Uh, from where we sit, we can say that we really... Like there's no practicability oh, no, in the no, 21st century. Not at all. So where do we go from uh, here? Because uh, these are courses that uh, call for, you know, understanding human behavior. And there's no better time to understand human behavior than now. Than now. <laughs> yeah. That's how we wrap it up. Good point to wrap it up. Thank you yes. very much. It's a conversation we'll keep having. Once we've ratified this, uh, let's get back and answer all these questions being asked by Kenyans here. Are very interested to see what happens to the university education in this country. Joining us on this broadcast here on the front row, Dr. Agnes Wahome, who's the CEO uh, for the Kenya Universities College's Central Placement Service, that is COOPS. Thank you very much. Good to have you here again. Professor Mwenda Ntarangwe, who is the CEO for the Commission for University Education. Always a pleasure to have you here. And Professor Geoffrey Muluvi, who is the Vice Chancellor of Southeastern uh, Kenya University, as well as the Chairperson of the Vice Chancellor's Committee of Public Universities. Very good to have you here, Professor Muluvi. Thank you very much, gentlemen and ladies, for all your questions and comments. My apologies, couldn't possibly run through all of them, but perhaps uh, once this has been ratified, we'll have another session to respond to your questions. Questions on the same. I am Akisa Andera. Glad you could join us here on the front row. Till next time, have a good one.